Welcome back everybody. This is the first video in a new series about Go that I'm gonna be doing. And this series will provide a broad overview of the Go programming language and is roughly inspired by the tour of Go or Go by example. Now, I think Go is an extremely powerful programming language and one that will continue to dominate the backend field for years and years to come. Go is the programming language that was used to build Kubernetes and Docker and is extremely powerful when it comes to concurrent programming, or in other words, programs that need to have multiple threads all running at the same time. In this first video, we're very quickly gonna go over how to install Go, how to get up and running, and then the Hello World program for Go. First thing we gotta do is actually install Go. And at the time of this recording, that can be found at golang.org slash doc slash install. That will bring you to this page where you can have the system specific button to download the binaries for your specific architecture and system. And then you can follow Linux, Mac, Windows, whatever system you're on to install further. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this since it's kind of branching off from there, but just follow these steps and you'll be right on your way. Once that's done downloading, I can go into my downloads folder and get that extracted. So here we are, this is the tarball that will have all the binaries and things for it. And we can extract that just like that. And it's gonna expand this up into all the Go stuff that you need and all the binaries. This is essentially all the source code and we'll compile down into the single Go binary with all the Go tooling as well. So now I have my Go folder here, and we're gonna move this into user local. This is Linux specific, but you basically need to move it somewhere that's accessible by your system. Next thing to do is make sure that we export those binaries into the path so that your system can see them when they're called from the command line. All we gotta do there is export a new path. And that's just gonna be our existing path plus user local go bin. And there we go. Now we should be able to go version and there we are, that's the latest version of Go installed onto this system. Again, this is gonna be a little bit different from Mac or other Linux distributions and probably a lot more different for Windows. Follow the steps on the golang.org documentation website and you'll be just in good shape. For a very simple hello world, first what we're gonna do is go mod init and then we have to give it some kind of name here. I'm just gonna call this example.com and that created a new go module for us. Now the reason I'm bringing Go modules into this right away is because they're really the de facto way to manage your dependencies in Go and start any new project. So I really believe just like with Rust Cargo that Go mod should be the first thing you do when you start a new project and is really critical to learning and understanding how Go works, how its dependency management works, and how you can get stuff compiled down to a simple program. So now if we look at what that gave us, it gave us just one go.mod file. This is the module file that defines the dependencies for that project. Let's take a look at it. Now, if we look here, it's just saying our module name is example.com and we're using go 116. If we had actual dependencies, say some library from GitHub or something, that would show up here in this actual module file. So now we're actually ready to write a little bit of go code, our hello world, compile it, and then run it. So we're just gonna call this main.go. And right away, this is just doing some fanciness for me. It gives me the initial program here. This first thing is our package. And Go code can be split up into different packages. This can be really important if you have public and private methods. Obviously, public methods are gonna be available to whatever package imports whatever other package, but private methods are only accessible within the package itself. So a function with one private method calling another private method can only do that within its own package. Next, we have the import statement. This can be imported from the Go standard library or other dependencies you might have. If it was something, say, from GitHub, we would have an import with github.com slash something something, and then we would have that available in this code. And then the really big part here is the main function. A lot like C, Go has to have a main function and that's defined by func main parentheses opening bracket closing bracket here this is the main entry point for your program every go program starts and ends in the main function so my plugins gave me a main function here and all we got to do is let's write hello world in here hello world now 
What this FMT print line is doing is obviously it should be printing a line to the screen when we run this in the terminal that will say, hello world. Let's save and exit this here. And now some of the real magic with Go is we can do one of two things. We can compile the program down into a binary and then run that binary or just run the code itself with the Go command line. So let's just run it real quick to see what happens. We can do go run main.go and we should see hello world. There it is. Great. A lot like Python, you can just run that code from the run command in the Go binary. So next, let's actually compile it down to a binary. What we can do is go build main.go and that should just give us a binary. Let's look at it. That's called main right there as we can see. Let's run it and it should say hello world. Now I hope you noticed how fast that binary was compared to just running it natively with go run. Obviously a binary is just machine code, so it's gonna be much, much faster than the go run interpreter trying to actually just run that go code itself. Now at the very beginning of this, I talked about go modules. Let's bring it full circle, add a dependency to this simple project, and then see how that gets added to our module. Let's add the Cobra dependency, which is a very, very popular tool for building Go command line interfaces. So the way you do that is go get, and then the path to the actual dependency, and this is in GitHub Cobra. So that's gonna download it, and it's gonna add the entry to our Go module file. So that finished downloading that dependency. We can look at the Go module file now and see that we have a requirement now of Cobra. This has been added to the project. Notice here that it's saying it's indirect. There's a lot of little nitty gritty details with Go modules, which can kind of be gross. We'll tackle those in a future video, which will go more in depth into Go module, how it works and some of the little details. But know for now that by doing Go get, we were able to add that dependency to our project and now it's available in the code for us to use. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the hello world of Go. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe for the next video in this series, and I will catch you next time. Peace, everybody.